Hello Indie Game Fan, 2021 has been a surprising year for indie games, with some out of left field releases and picks that entertain us in this weird start stop kind of year. So presenting the top 10 best so far. Same rules apply, no current early access titles, but the game could have launched out of early access in 2021, although special mention does go to the survival crafting title Valheim, which absolutely took over the world in February, where no list talking about the best indie games would be complete without it. Impressively coming to us from a 5 person team and is perhaps the definition of the indie dream. Let's begin with Cyber Shadow, a title that was my most anticipated pixel art game of the year, where its position on the list means that we already have a super strong year of new indie games. Play as the sole survivor of a ninja clan, having to traverse and fight your way through a world overtaken by synthetic lifeforms. Of course, the retro pixel art is the main draw, looking 16-bit spectacular and in a similar vein does capture the feel of classics like Ninja Gaiden. While it's not strictly linear, it isn't exactly a metroidvania either, falling more on the action platformer end of things, but there are plenty of new upgrades and weapons along the way. While it looks and plays great, I wouldn't say that there's anything particularly innovative about this, but that's not a knock on it by any means since what is there is excellently executed, earning it its spot on the list. If there's one title that has been somewhat of a constant in my life in 2021, that would have to be Cozy Grove, a chill life sim title where you play as a spirit scout helping the various ghostly bears on the island of Cozy Grove. There's plenty to do with animals to feed, resources to gather, and things to craft, and while it isn't the most mechanically complex title, the cozy vibes are a nice part of my daily routine. I've talked about this in my monthly newsletter, which you should absolutely subscribe to, so check it out via the link in the description. I love roguelites, so expect to see a number of them on this list, but the super stylish Curse of the Dead Gods is not to be missed. Released out of early access after about a year, this was an example of how to do early access right, with almost monthly update patches and videos. It feels great to play, with a fantastic look, and even post-launch has continued to support this, most recently with a crossover with Dead Cells, so good stuff all around. I've had my eye on Everhood for at least 2-3 years since I stumbled upon its demo on itch.io, but this is a rhythm adventure RPG that is not to be missed. From the look and vibe, comparisons have been made to Undertale, and while that is a monolith of a game to live up to, I do believe that this game is able to stand on its own two feet. You play as a wooden puppet whose arm was stolen, going on a quest to retrieve it, but the unique world and cast of quirky characters was a joy in itself. The combat is one of the most interesting parts, having you dodge, attack, and jump over attacks in real time, of course looking similar to a rhythm game which is why I love it. The soundtrack is also excellent, making this a well-rounded package. One of the cutest games that I thought would be a hidden gem but managed to find quite the audience is Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion, a quirky Zelda-style action-adventure game where our mischievous protagonist has gotten in trouble with the law and must find a way to evade tax and to take down the corrupt government. Don't worry, it's not as heavily political as it seems, where the inspiration for this game is actually the meme of Yoshi committing tax fraud. It 
it has combat and puzzles, as expected for this genre, but where it really shines is the writing, being quite funny indeed. Where it did also get post-launch support that added hats, so it's that kind of whimsical experience. As a fan of Metroidvanias, of course, Record of Lodos War, Lead Lit in Wonder Labyrinth gets a spot on the list, the beautifully illustrated and animated pixel art title from the developer of Toho Luna Nights. Yes, while it's very similar to a Symphony of the Night, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing, since that game is a classic for a good reason, but a change in setting does work in this case. It's not super deep and you can get overpowered if you grind enough, but that's just characteristic of games on the Castlevania end of things, but it's an excellent title for fans of the genre. warrior, there comes a time yeah! when a moment will decide your fate. I don't usually cover multiplayer titles since indies with a focus on those are either dead or absolutely huge to the point of mainstream success where Chivalry 2 does fall in the camp of the latter. But oh boy, this is a great one. To be honest, given the popularity of the first entry, the success of its sequel was a no-brainer as long as the developers managed to do it right, and do it right they did. First-person melee combat is one of the tougher things to do in games, but building off the experience from the first game does feel excellent here. Up to 64 players battle for supremacy, lopping off heads in a bloody fashion, with the pure chaos and insanity of battle is a sight to behold. Don't be fooled, despite the exterior, this is one of the silliest games out there, but the matches are more about having fun and the wild things that you can make the game physics do, rather than a strictly serious competition, which makes it excellent for someone like me to just jump in every once in a while. There are many stories in our past. Many interesting, but most untold. And though they may be forgotten one day, there will always be others to rise from the void. Another standout hit of the year has to be Loop Hero, a title that dominated headlines in March, although that may have been aided in part from a general lack of other big games out there, so indie developers take note. It's a pixel art game which kind of blurs the lines between genres, having elements of roguelites, RPGs, tech builders and idol games, as your hero completes loop after loop around the track and fights enemies along the way. Place enough tiles and the area boss appears, where your character build and equipment factors the most into your success. Because of the blurring of genre lines, this is one of the most interesting entries so far, where it does come to us from the Russian developer of Please Don't Touch Anything, which is worth a play as well. I often say that it's possible to tell whether or not an early access game will become great, having picked titles like Slay the Spire, Dead Cells and Hades in the past, and having said a similar thing about Skull the Hero Slayer, and I'm glad that it managed to find an audience as well. It's a roguelite platformer where you play as a lowly skeleton on a quest to defeat the powerful human army and to rescue his king from captivity. But the interesting hook is that our protagonist is able to equip various skulls which grant him special powers. These character classes range from thief, Pac-Man, Werewolf, Alchemist, Clown, Genie, Mummy, Rockstar, Samurai and more, all of which in turn can be upgraded and advanced through the Awakening Path, which means plenty of variety and does also have a permanent upgrade system that keeps the game compelling.
the action and pixel art is top notch, so you can already see how this checks all the boxes that I love, making it a no-brainer for the list. Perhaps being front of mind has led to Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights getting its spot on the list, since this dark fantasy metroidvania just launched out of early access after just 5 months in the program. The mysterious reign of death is falling over the kingdom, transforming humans and creatures aside into monstrosities, where the descendant of the priestess is the only one that can purge the blight. It's a beautiful title, with some fantastic art and animation, not to mention the effects in combat being super impressive as well. The indirect control of the character, where our heroine does not directly attack is also interesting, relying on fallen knights for support, but as a fan of Metroid Venus, I cannot say no, taking the number one spot. For a look at upcoming Metroid Venus games to look forward to, watch this video and I will see you after the jump.